What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec. I'm doing Rebound from Hack the Box, which is just a monster of a box and it's pure Active Directory. There is no web exploitation here. And I know what you're thinking, but no, there is no ADCS attacks either. It starts off with the RID brute force to get a AS rep roastable account. However, you can't crack the hash. Instead, you can use this configuration in order to perform a Kerberos attack, which normally requires credentials, which gets you the hash to a different service that you can crack. And from there, we'll find a pretty well-hidden Bloodhound path to reset an account that lets us get on the system. And there's another user logged into the box. So we use a cross-session relay attack with remote potato to get their NTLM hash, which leads us to being able to read a GMSA password that's a group managed service account, but it has constrained delegation. I'm gonna fumble here a little bit because this is all somewhat new to me, but the constrained delegation account, we can't create a fordable ticket. However, we can abuse role-based constrained delegation to create a fordable service ticket and then create a TGS with the two tickets that enables us to impersonate the DC and perform a DC sync. So with all that being said, let's just jump in. As always, we're gonna start off with the end map. So dash SC for default scripts, SV, enumerate versions, OA, output all formats, put in the end map directory and call it rebound. And then the IP address of 10.10.11.231. This can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have quite a few ports open. It looks like 11 because we scanned 1000 and 989 are closed. Um, the first thing I see is simple DNS plus, which is the default DNS server for Windows. So I immediately look and confirm it is Active Directory. And we see a few domain names. So we have rebound.htb and dc01.rebound.htb. So let's go ahead and add these to our host file before we forget. So I'm going to add 10.10.11.231, rebound htb, dc01, rebound htb. And whenever you're doing Active Directory, always add just the server as well, the DC01. So with those added, let's go see if there's anything else here. Um, I don't notice a web server on 80 or 443. So this is just a Active Directory server. Um, we got the DNS there. The, let's see, anything else. We do have a clock skew. So if we do anything Kerberos related, we do have to make sure our date is correct. Otherwise those things will fail, but there's not much in Nmap. So let's just go do net exec real quick against this box because there's not much else for us to do, right? So I'm gonna do net exec 10, 10, 11, 2, 31 to confirm we can see this. And it looks like we indeed can. So the next thing I wanna do is look at the shares. So I'll do dash dash shares and we're not authenticated. Now, if we specify a user that does not exist um, and a blank password or any password at all, um, you get a different login context. I forget what this is. Maybe it's unauthenticated user. If you don't specify a user, it's anonymous. Um, Windows terminology always confuses me, but you can put anything you want from the password. I should have just left it blank for ease. Oh, maybe it has to be blank. So I think it's a user that doesn't exist and a blank password. There we go. Um, again, Windows confuses me sometimes. So now that we have this, we can go back to the shares and we can say um, the module is spider plus. So we can crawl all the shares because we want to see what is in this shared folder, right? There's a directory shared. We have read permissions to it. So I'm doing spider plus to list all the contents. The output is here, so I'm going to cat the file and there's nothing. So um, the share is empty. Now we don't really have much else we could go off of. Uh, we don't even really have a user list to do like a brute force or AS rep roasting or any of those things. So um, let's create a user list because we can do a RID brute force. And I forget the flag, so let's just do net exec smb-h and search back for RID, and here we go. And the flag is RID brute, and then we can specify the maximum number. The default is 4,000. So let's go and do this. So 231 does not exist, blank password, RID brute. I'm not gonna explain exactly how this works. If you wanna know, just go to ipsec.rocks and type RID. I'm sure I explain it. Um, Maybe that has to be in quotes. I'm missing something. Let's see.
Net exec SM. I'm not exactly sure what I was missing there, but we got it working. Um, but as I was saying, just go to ipsec.rocks, type RID. I'll explain exactly how this is working under the hood in that video. Um, I think it's the manager video in specific that I uh, talk about it. So we do have the maximum being 3382 right here. That is somewhat close to 4,000. So I'm gonna change the RID brute parameter to 10,000 just to see if I get any more users. If something came back where it was like 9,000 in the RID, then I'd increase it to like 15,000 and just keep going up there because I wanna make sure whenever I do this, I get all the users possible. If I set it too high right off the bat, it may just take a long time to run and that's annoying, right? So it's all about finding that sweet spot. Um, if you spent, set it to like 100,000, it would just, take 10 times as long to run, right? Now we stopped around um, 7,600, so I'm confident we got them all. So I'm going to highlight all this text because I want to copy it to a file. So let's make v output.txt because we have to create word list from this, right? We want to just get all the users. So um, actually I'm going to rename output.txt uh, let's name this RID brute.txt so we know where it came from. So the first step is we want to erase everything up to the user, right? So I'm gonna do a search and replace. We'll do dot star and then rebound double backslash and then forward slash to replace it with nothing. And there we go. So the next thing we wanna do is only grab um, the users, right? We have SID type group here. There's a script SID type alias. So what I'm gonna do is uh, colon G and the exclamation point to say um, everything that is not this. And I'll do SID type user and then slash D. So everything that doesn't have SID type user on the line, I'm going to delete it. There we go. And here we wanna do another search and replace and we'll say um, space dot star G, there we go. I'm gonna write users dot text. And I can do U twice to go back here because I kind of want to get the groups as well, right? So let's do the same thing. We'll do colon G exclamation point, SID type group slash D, there we go, percent S. And some of these groups have spaces in them. So we'll do a um, space open parenthesis like that. And now I can say groups.txt. And then we can quit that. And we have a file, users and groups.txt. The groups, I don't know if it's useful, but since I was there, I might as well have grabbed it, right? So now we have a list of all the usernames. So we could try like brute forcing all of them with like um, summer 2023 bang or something like that. But most of the time, Hack the Box doesn't have us completely guessing at passwords. So if we look at the LDAP module of NetExec, there is a AS rep roast, right? And what this is going to do is the same thing as in packets get NP user. If the user has the, um, I think password can be stored in reversible encryption flag set, it grabs the hash. So let's try this. I've done, um, the impact it way a hundred times. I don't think I've shown the net exec way. So for if I can do it in net exec, I'm going to try. So we'll do as rep roast.txt. And we have to switch this over to the LDAP module. And let's see, that did not work. Oh, we have to specify a user file, right? The users does not exist, doesn't matter. Um, let's go with users.txt. And let's see, we have one right off the bat, uh, J Jones. So if I cat AS rep roast, it puts it in hashcat format for me. So we can just grab this. And then I'm gonna go over to the Kraken, which is a box on my local network that I just have for password cracking. So I can go in the hashcat folder, v hashes, um, we'll call this and uh, as rep, or we'll do rebound.asrep roast, paste it in. 
ash cat. And then let's specify that file opt word list rocku.txt. Let's just make sure it attempts to crack. And then we'll start moving to um, something else, right? And well, that attempts fast and nothing cracked. So we don't have anything there, but there are two forms of curb roasting, right? Uh, if we do net exec um, LDAP dash H, let's see, AS rep, there is the regular curb roasting, which gets the service principal names. Normally, you need to have an authenticated account to do this one, right? The AS rep roast, you just need to know the username. Um, you can perform curb roasting attacks if there is a AS rep roastable account without any authentication. It's pretty amazing. Um, I don't think NetExec does it. And I want to say you have to have Bleeding Edge and Packet to do it. Uh, let's see. Um, if I go here, if I go to Google, let's say uh, curb roast with AS rep. Let's see if there's a blog post about it, right? Uh, roasting AS reps. Let's see, what is the flag? I want to say the flag is no pre-auth. I don't see quickly where a blog post is. The title of what I was looking for is new attack paths AS requested um, service tickets. And this blog post is going to explain um, essentially what we do here. So if you want to read more, I would recommend that. But let's just perform the attack because we know J Jones is AS rep roastable. Um, the get user SPNs should have a flag called no pre auth in it. So if we do no dash pre auth, we specify the user, which is J Jones. This is the AS rep roastable guy. Uh, we do users file, users.txt, and then specify the DC host of 10, 10, 11, 231. And then we need the target. We can just do rebound.htb. And get user SPN is saying invalid argument, uh, no pre auth. So what I'm going to do is use the latest version of mpacket. So we have it in slash opt. I'm going to do Python 3 dash M VM dot VM. And I do this because I've learned my lesson too much of pip installing M packet, right? So let's do source VM bin activate. Okay. Pip install dot. And this is going to install M packet in this environment. And they're going to rerun that get user SPN command, but we'll have to replace where we have the path, right? Because we're no longer there. We want to say home HTB rebound users.txt. And there we go. We're getting some hits actually. So let's see. I'm just going to copy everything. Okay. Uh, let's go back here. V. Um, I'll call it spn.txt, or maybe we should call it kerberoast. Uh, kerberoast.txt. Then we can paste everything in. And what we want to do is grab everything with KRB5TGS probably, right? They're all KRB5TGS. They are. So you guessed it. We're going to do a colon G exclamation point, then KRB5TGS and then slash D. So now we have this only with those. Um, if we look at it, let's see, we have, what accounts do we have? Um, KBTGT, DC01, um, oh, it's right here, L dot monitor, 23, Oh, these are different ones. That's 18. Yeah, so KBTGT, DC01, LDAP monitor, and delegator. Now, I'm going to guess all these since they end in a dollar. 
are going to be randomized and we're not gonna be able to crack those passwords, right? This is the machine account DC01, the machine account delegator, group managed service account delegator, um, care BGDD, not gonna crack anyways. So I'm only going to grab LDAP monitor. And the reason why I'm only grabbing one is because you can't really specify multiple um, encryption types and a hash file and give it to Hashcat. So that's why I'm being picky here and starting with LDAP monitor. So I'll grab LDAP out of Kerberos, grab this, then we'll go back here and to Hashcat v hashes slash rebound dot Kerberos. Paste it in. And let's run the same exact thing, except changing out the word list. So we'll see if we can crack this LDAP monitor. Um, nothing matched the structure. I don't have everything copied. There we go. And hopefully, that was delegator. Um, user error, this is a skill issue. Copy. Third time's the charm. That's definitely out at monitor. Let's see. There we go. That is what I expected. And it almost instantly cracked. So I'm gonna do a dash dash show. And we can see the password is something I don't wanna say because it could get me demonetized, but when you see it, you know, right? So let's go and test this out. So I'm gonna do net exec um, SMB 10, 10, 11, uh, what was the IP? Uh, net exec SMB 10, 10, 11, 231. I guess I should have just used the DNS name. Um, LDAP something underscore monitor and the password. And it looks like we can authenticate as LDAP monitor. So the first thing I want to do is uh, let's actually test LDAP as well. I'm assuming LDAP monitor can authenticate as LDAP. Uh, we fail there. I wonder if we add Kerberos. Uh, clock skew. NTP date, 10, 10, 11, 231. Uh, let's do this with sudo. And we will attempt to authenticate again. taking its time. I take that as a good sign. I expect it, okay, there we go. We have some output. And awesome, we can authenticate as LDAP monitor. Um, I'm gonna do the dash dash users flag because I wanna make sure I grabbed all the users out of um, the box, right? So let's grab all of this. V users two dot text. We can paste this. Oh my God. There we go. Um, let's say dot star start of line. I don't know what I want to filter this by. Uh, let's see. Grab that. Nope. Uh, let's see, did that put on my clipboard? No. No. I was doing so good with my Vim skills and then this happened. Uh, let's see. Guest, uh, what line are we at? 52, 52X, there we go, that works. K, 
guy. Uh, space, anything. There we go. Cat users to dot text, users dot text. Let's pipe it over to sort unique dash C. And let's see, there are two that only exist in one file. And that's gonna be probably our RID brute force file because the LDAP did not think these were user accounts because it treated them as computer accounts. So our user.txt originally got all the users. Again, um, don't have to do that step. It's always just nice for that uh, little sanity check. So with this uh, LDAP command, we can also just get Bloodhound. Um, if we look at the help of this, we have a dash dash Bloodhound, and then we specify the name server and what collection we want. So let's do dash dash Bloodhound, dash NS, 10, 10, 11, 231. And it should create us a zip file. So there it goes. And we can also specify dash C all to get all the options, which I probably should have done. Um, so we're going to do that next. So we can do dash C all. And while that goes, let's start up near 4J. So I can do near 4J console. Log that in, and then we go opt Bloodhound where I have it installed. And that wasn't good. Looks like we have an error. And I think this also errors on the latest Bloodhound Python as well. Um, the error Pointing down to, I just ran it with different collections and I got rid of the object property. That seems to be where it was at. So let's just go and do that manually. This is annoying. Okay, let's see if this one runs. And again, there's nothing, no reason why I didn't just run um, the Bloodhound, what is it, dot .py? Like this one, the only reason why I went with crack map exec is because we haven't really done it before. Um, it's a wrapper around the same exact script that does it. So um, yeah, now that we have this, let's copy the results here. And we can drag and drop them. So places, let's go to HTB, rebound, and we wanna grab the zip. And it looks like it does not want to unzip. Let's grab this all. I am not sure. Let's just restart Bloodhound. Cause I should have been able to drag, drag and drop the JSON files. Let's see. Let's just drag and drop the latest one. Ends in five, seven. So I'm guessing we just drag and drop too many files. Weird. Uh, I think this is definitely the latest one that has more files and we did more collections this time. So we should have Bloodhound all installed. So clear finished. And then we can just do the standard Bloodhound checks, right? So we could find principles with DC sync rights. Generally, we don't find anything interesting here. We can look at the groups. Uh, if I go to settings, always display, that makes it a bit easier. Um, nothing there. Let's look at shortest paths. Let's do shortest paths to high value targets. And this is a big mess. Um, looking at it, the only thing that looks really interesting is this piece up here in the corner. We have a non-standard group, the service management, 
There's two members that are part of it, uh, F. Flock and P. Paul. Orend has the ability to add himself to this group, and that group um, has generic all over service users, which WinRM is a part of. And we want to get to WinRM. I'm going to mark this as a high value target because um, we want to get shell on the box, right? So I'm guessing that will be a starting point. Um, I'm going to mark Orend also as a high value target because we want to get to him. Uh, we can mark our guy, which was the LDAP, right? LDAP monitor. We will mark you as owned. And let us do analysis, shortest path from own principles, LDAP monitor, there's nothing there. Path to high value targets. Uh, let's see, is Orend here? I wish I could have selected him. Here he is. Uh, let's see. That's administrators, key admin. He's in the users, enterprise admin. So there's nothing really interesting about this. If we look at Orend, let's see. Is there anything in his properties that's interesting? Don't see anything. Let's look at, um, let's see. Inbound control. Main admin account operator. So inbound control is all the users that can control this user, right? And we don't have anything. So we have to figure out how to get to them. Um, we can try like a password spray with the LDAP monitor password against all the other users. Maybe whoever set up the LDAP monitor also set up um, their AD user account, right? So if we do users.txt, we will see if there's any success. Um, J Jones is vulnerable to AS rep roast. Uh, let's see. I swear Orend was in users.txt. He's there, but we don't see crack map hitting him. Oh, we have to do continue on success. Um, continue on success because we hit LDAP monitor and then it said, oh, we found a successful password and stopped, right? So let's keep going. And there we go. We have a hit from Orend. So now we have access to him. Uh, we can be 100% sure by just entering his name, uh, O-O-R-E-N-D, right? Okay. So now we can mark him as owned. So Orend, let's mark as owned. And I know there's a crack map automation to do that. I never remember exactly how. So let us go to analysis. Shortest path from own principles. And we can see Orend can add himself to service management, which is part of service users, which contains WinRM service. So let's look at this add self edge. If we look at Windows, it's gonna tell us how to do it in PowerShell. If we look at Linux, it's gonna give us this, but I couldn't get this command actually working. Let's try it out. Um, to start things off, because we're gonna be doing Kerberos on Linux, we have to edit the uh, kerb5.com file, and we have to point it to our domain. So I'm gonna do example.com to rebound HDB. And then let's do the lowercase version and the admin server and KDC DC01. That is still good. Okay. So we can do this net RPC group. And then the target group is uh, service MGMT, right? Let's see. Service MGMT. 
the target user. We want to add ourselves to the group, the domain, rebound HTB, and this is going to be how we authenticate. Uh, one, great. Is that the password? Uh, let's see. I should just copy and paste it. And the domain controller, rebound HTB. Uh, password not correct. Maybe we have to escape this. Yeah, I still can't get this working. Um, we could add the dash K flag for Kerberos. Um, invalid parameter. Let's just do a K init or end at rebound HTB. Uh, sudo v etsy host. Is it case sensitive? Is that it? Rebound HTB. Something is wonky here with this knet command. I think we screwed up our KRB5 config. I wonder if one of these needs to be like all capitals. There's like KDC or something. Or maybe we just specify the username. Yep, there we go. KNet pulled the rebound HDB from that. Now put in an invalid password, okay. A valid password. So now we have validated authentication. If I do K list, we do have my ticket. So I should be able to go back to the net RPC command. We get rid of the password and cannot connect. If I get rid of dash K. Yeah, we get access denied. So I don't know exactly why I can't do it through this net RPC command. Um, wonder if we could add a different account. Let's see, LDAP monitor. Like I wonder if we can't add ourself. Uh, login failure. Let's see. Yeah, access denied. So I don't know why we can't seem to do it this way. Um, my only guess is it's trying through like SMB, not LDAP or something weird like that. But there is a tool called Bloody AD. I'm sure you could do this through Impacket, but I didn't have any like Impacket scripts that I found to easily add a user. So um, Bloody AD is kind of like a Swiss Army knife for Active Directory and Python. I don't think it uses impact on the hood. I uh, maybe it does. Um, contributions. Let's see. Bloody AD. Formatters. Network. LDAP. Is it going to use impact? I don't think so. But another tool. Always good to have versatility. So let's go install this. I already have it on my opt directory. So if we do opt bloody AD, we have it here. Let's just do what we did with um, impact it. Let's create the virtual environment. You can see the get pulls already up to date. So we can do source VM bin activate and then pip install dot. And this is going to install everything. Um, if you're missing some Kerberos libraries, it's going to tell you, and then you just have to install them with apt or whatever you're using. But now that we have bloody AD, we can execute it. So let's see, we want like to add, right? So if we do bloody AD add dash H, 
we can see we can add, let's see, add a user, I think is what we want to do. Uh, that's no, creating a new. We want to do add group member, right? And I just realized why we can't do this. Oh no, we're adding ourselves here. And then we have generic all. So what we have to do is we're going to add ourselves to service management, and then that's going to give us um, generic all over this OU so we can give ourselves permission to edit this, right? So we want to use add group member. And I'm going to specify all the credentials, these flags first, so it makes it easier to change. So we do or end, password, uh, one great something for you. There we go. And then I think we have to specify the host. Okay. So we want to do add group member. So we do service MGMT and then ORend. So we're adding ORend to that group. Um, does the M have to be capital? It's taking longer. There we go. So ORend has been added to service management. So if I had reran this again, we would see um, ORend is in that group, but I mean, trust its output. I'm not gonna do a group list. Uh, maybe we can quickly. Uh, can we do NetRPC for that? Let's see, add mem. Is there list mem? Let's see. Members. There we go. So if I look at members, I can see ORend is now a member. Um, if I had done that before, it wouldn't. And the reason why I did net RPC is like, I just wanted to make sure I was authenticating correctly because I'm still puzzled why that did not work before. So now that we have added ourselves to the group, let's see, where was that command? Did I do it here? There we go. So the next thing we have to do is give ourselves generic all access over the um, service accounts OU. So we can say add generic all, then OU is equal to um, the service users. So we gotta get the OU here. We can just copy it, I guess, the distinguished name. There we go. And then we give it to ORend. So now I have generic all over this. That's going to let me change the password or manipulate um, the WinRM service. So because now I have generic all here, I can manipulate this guy, right? So let's do, um, there's two things we could do. The first one is the easy, the no brainer. Um, we could just like set password when RM service to please subscribe um, exclamation point. And the password set, I can do evil when RM dash I DCO one rebound HTB dash U uh, when RM service P please subscribe. And this will hopefully let me in. It's thinking about it, waiting for my shell. Uh, SVC, shoot. Typo in the username. There we go. So that's an easy way to get the shell, right? But you never will really want to update a user's password if you can avoid it. And we can avoid it, right? Um, I'm gonna 
pause the recording and we'll come back in like 10, 15 minutes because I want the um, self heal script to change the password back to the original value because I just want to grab the NTLM hash of that. And then the next time the self heal script runs, it's not going to change the hash and screw our connection up, right? So we'll be back in like 10, 15 minutes, okay? It's been enough time, so if I try to log in again, it's going to fail because the password has changed. Um, you'll probably just have to trust me here because it does take quite a while for WinRM to time out. So um, we can do shadow credentials, which attaches a certificate to the user and uses that to log in, right? The easiest way to do it is through Certify. So if we do Certify Shadow um, dash H, I think it's auto, right? Uh, list. Yeah, we can do auto. And does this give more help? Let's see. I think it's auto. Let's specify the username, which is orend at rebound.htb. The password, one great for you. Uh, Kerberos, and we give it the account, which is winrm underscore svc, and then the target, which is dco one dot um, rebound htb. And I just realized this is going to fail because we have to add ourselves to the group again. Um, so let's do add. Let's see. Uh, let's. Do I have group member? There we go. That will add me into the group. And then we wanna add um, OU. So that adds generic all to the OU. And we can run this certify command again. So this is gonna automate all those steps, hence the key auto there. So once we um, attach the certificate, we do it, and then we get the TGT, and it gives us the NTLM hash for the WinRM service. So if we just did evil WinRM dash I um, DCO one dot rebound HTB, then dash capital H, I wanna say for the hash, and we need the username WinRM SVC. This should let us connect and we get logged in. So this is the safer way to do it because we didn't modify the um, NTLM password of WinRM service, right? So if anything was configured to use that account, it's fine, like it didn't break anything. Um, we could also do bloody AD with that as well if we wanted to. So this is gonna be the same steps, um, let's see. I think add has a shadow credentials, it does. So we do add shadow credentials and then win our um, SVC. Okay. So it saved the certificates and then says run this tool in order to get the hash. So let's go and clone this. And then we go in here, pip3 install requirements. While that installs, let us make sure we have what it wants to. Am I in edit mode? I am. There we go. So when we run this command, it's going to um, request the TGT and it saves it to this WinRM uh, C cache file. And then if we do, uh, what is it? Export KRB 5CC name. I think that's the variable name. Opt bloody, uh, let's do K list. Um, let's see. Okay, no credentials. I wanted to wipe the previous um, hash we had from earlier. 
So now I can do export KRB 5 cc name is equal to uh, my working directory slash winrm svc.cc cache. If we do klist again, we can see that ticket is there. So let's go back to that winrm command. Where is it? I should have just done control R. I'm gonna get rid of the hash. And we'll just specify, I think we specify dash K. Um, let's see, dash realm. Uh, let's do rebound HTB. And there we go. Um, I guess, do we not even need the user? Cause it just reads that from the ticket. Yeah. So that is the other way if we want to do it through um, bloody AD, right? So as win RM service, uh, let's see, now that we have this owned, let's see, or end win RM, let's mark him as owned. Uh, let's do analysis, shortest path from own principles. And we go win RM service. Nothing, right? We can PS remote to DC01, but we already knew that. So when doing this box, I spent a lot of time at this step. I tried things like um, ADCS attacks, which there were no vulnerable certificates, um, just a bunch of things. And there's one thing that really stuck out that I just missed for the longest time because when I ran task list, um, I don't have permission to in PowerShell. Um, I'm waiting for it to, there we go, say access denied but you can do get process, right? And I guess WinPs I probably should have ran because it would have somewhat highlighted this. And here you can see something really stick out. Um, there are some ones here, like one explorer. This is the session ID. This means someone is logged into the box. We don't know who is logged into the box, but we can take an educated guess. If we do DIRC colon users, we can see that T Brady is most likely. It's either this WinRM service um, administrator or T Brady, right? If we wanted to, we can look at Bloodhound to see what T Brady has. So if I go here, let's um, let's see. So anything T Brady can do. Shortest paths. I'm just gonna mark it as owned so I can do the shortest path from owned and look what T Brady has. Uh, no, let's see. We go outbound, he's just a member, inbound, nothing interesting. I want to say there was something I saw in recon that I can't remember that T. Brady can do. Inbound, no. Did I not gather it? Let's see. High value targets. So that's that. Who are you? Win or M service or end. I don't see T Brady anywhere. Okay. Let's see, there was this delegator service account. If I do shortest path to here, let's see, does this highlight it? Administrator, there we go. So there's gotta be an easier way to see this from clicking on T Brady. But we can see T Brady can read the GMSA, which is group managed service account password of this delegator account. I wonder if the answer is you just look at delegator and then go backwards. There should be a way to go from T Brady to that, I would think, but maybe not. So we know what we could do with this. We could read the delegator group managed service account password, but we don't know anything about that. And if we did like a query user or a QW Insta, 
um, it fails. And it's because I think um, we're a remote connection. We have to trick Windows and thinking we're a local connection and then these commands will work. And maybe task list will work as well because I think the RPCs for these tasks um, are not allowed remotely. So there's a registry setting you could set to allow it, but I don't know why you'd want to. Um, we could do, verify this by doing run as CS. So run as CS. Um, this is a nice C sharp tool that will essentially give you run as ability. So you can run as a local thing, like a local session. And unlike the default Windows run as, it'll accept a password as an argument. Um, I believe if the Windows run, like native run as tool accepted passwords as arguments, you wouldn't need this tool, but since it doesn't, um, that's what this tool is doing. So let's go here. Let's CP downloads. Uh, what a copy to? It was downloads, right? Uh, open folder. Downloads. Oh, CP downloads, run as C sharp. There we go. Let's just move it. Um, make dir run as CS. Unzip. Typos galore. Okay. So let's go in program data. And then program data. And then we can just upload um, HTB rebound run as cs.exe. C. It wants us to be in the bloody AD directory. That tool name is Oply named. Uh, thank God I did not delete that directory. I wonder if I started the path with a slash if it would just be smart enough to not do current working directory, but regardless, we have it. So if I do run as cs.exe, um, the username password doesn't matter. If we could specify the username password if we wanted to, if we leave it blank, it'll run in our current context. So we can do QW Insta. And I think we want what login session. Let's see. Probably nine. There we go. So now it's showing T Brady. Um, do it again. So I wonder if we did, um, let's see, task list. That was the other one. Now task list works. Again, task list just wasn't exposed via um, remote RPC, I believe. Uh, query user should also work. Um, we probably have to put that in quotes. Yeah. So. If there are commands that you think should be working that aren't, it's probably just because you're in a remote session and you need um, local login privileges. So now that we know um, that is T Brady running it, we can use the remote potato trick in order to coerce an NTLM v2 authentication and get the hash of T Brady. And if we're lucky, we'll be able to crack it. And the reason why we're able to get his hash is because he's logged into the same box we are. So let us uh, grab the remote potato tool. So we're gonna do remote potato. Coincidentally, from the same guy that made um, run as CS. So let's just download the latest, uh, copy link. W get make der remote potato unzip 
and we'll copy this to bloody AD because we're too lazy to change our working directory. So let's upload remote potato. And then if we look at it, the socat command should be here. So it's not exactly intuitive how to run this, right? Um, in order for the potato, like the decom thing to work, it has to be able to talk to port 135 and we stand up a malicious server. I wanna say that's an Oxid server or something we stand up, but we stand it up so we can redirect it to something else. Uh, we can't do it on localhost because localhost already has 135 running and we can't just manipulate what the, um, I, I'm gonna say Oxid server is doing because we don't have permission to. So we stand it up locally, then we forward it over to um, the remote host on port quad nine. So it's a nasty hack in order to get it talking to a special service, right? We can't listen 135 on local host, so we listen 135 on a remote host and bind that to 9999 of that remote host and send it there. Uh, I'm sure I did a bad job explaining that, but let's run the socat command. So sudo socat v tcp listen 135 fork reuse address then TCP 10, 10, 11, 9999. So we have that SOCAT running. So now we can access remote potato. So remote potato.exe. Uh, let's see. We have a few methods. We can do, I think method two. So we do method two, S1, um, our IP address, so 10.10.14.8, because it's gonna query 10.10.14.8.135, and that's when we direct them back to port 9999, because that's the port we tell this service to listen on. And there we go. We saw a bunch of gibberish here. That was all the network traffic getting redirected. But then it goes to the rogue, again, I'm gonna call it, oh yeah, it is a rogue Oxid ser server. And that lets us get the hash of T Brady. So let's go ahead and copy this. Let's go back to hashcat v hashes um, rebound.ntlm v2, paste this in, hashcat, um, that file opt word list rock you. And I'm guessing this is already in hashcat format. It is, and it's already cracked T Brady's password. So we can do dash dash show and 543 bomb bomb. I have no idea what that password is or why it's in rock you, but hey, we got T Brady. So if we do net exec SMB U T Brady dash P this password, um, we never did the target 231. It's going to authenticate us. So we knew from Bloodhound that T Brady has the ability to um, read delegators group managed service account password, right? So if we went here, um, shortest path to here, uh, let's see. Where is it? Generic. I had just saw it. There we go. So T Brady read group managed service account password. Um, I'm sure it tells us how to do it with like Impacket or something. If we do help Linux abuse, uh, it uses yeah this script to do it, but we can just do it through NetExec. And that's a LDAP option because you're gonna query the LDAP registry. So if we, look at it, there's just a dash dash GMSA. So if we specify GMSA, uh, oh, we have to do Kerberos authentication. There we go. Come on, there we go. So we get the NTLM hash of the 
uh, delegated group managed service account password. If you don't know what GMSA is, it's just a password that automatically rotates to a random value every X days. And then the service accounts can just magically pull it. So this way you don't have to worry about changing like MSSQL's password uh, to do compliance, right? It just automatically does it and the service has a way to pull it. So it's all um, good. But with this, we should now be able to authenticate as this account. So let's do delegator, is it dash H? Probably capital H for a hash. And I would think it follows the standard format of colon hash. Is that how we doing, net exec? Uh, ODAP signing is enforced. So we do dash K. Let's see. Yep, we can authenticate as that. If that was an invalid hash, let's just make sure. I always like just testing it to make sure it's working. We have pre-auth failure. So we have successfully got the delegator's password. Um, oh, wait. That is weird that it worked without that. Yeah, I am surprised. Um, it just magically knew to add that. That was weird. Um, let's do it with SMB. Let's see, it authenticated. Do it without the dollar. It's gonna fail, right? It authenticated. So it's authenticating there because the account doesn't exist. To do two three, that hash doesn't exist. Please fail. There we go. Okay. So we do need the dollar. Um, for LDAP, for some reason, I don't think we did. But the reason why you saw this a success is because when, remember when we started the video, we did a user that doesn't exist and then an invalid password and we authenticated? Um, that's what it's doing here, right? We gave it a user that did not exist and a invalid hash, but it didn't matter what we gave it for the hash. It would just automatically authenticate. But when we had a valid user, that's when the password actually matters. So. Now that we have Delegator, we have to figure out what it can do. And this is extremely tricky because it's going to be a um, Kerberos type of attack, but it's kind of half configured. So Bloodhound isn't showing it as available for some reason. Um, see, if we go over to Delegator, I would expect to see unconstrained de uh, constrained delegation or something in here. It may also be compounded by we couldn't get object properties of accounts. So we couldn't see a lot of the information, but Bloodhound isn't too helpful to us. In order to see this, it's easiest if we just go to impact it. And to do that, I'm actually gonna go to Bloody AD because I also wanna use tools out of there later. Um, so let's activate this virtual environment and I can run find delegation. And then we just specify the credential. So rebound HTTP um, or end and then the password uh, one GRE, I think that's this. I think that's the password. Um, we need to specify the IP. So that is DC01 and we can do K for Kerberos. So this is gonna show all the delegation and we can see there is indeed constrained delegation here. And if you don't understand what all this is, the simplest way to explain it is Let's say I'm hosting some type of resource on Active Directory. I'm a file server, right? And you want to authenticate to me, but you don't want to give me your password. Um, I'm going to have constrained delegation. Maybe a database is more common for this. So forget file server, think of a database. Um, you want to authenticate to me using Kerberos. I'm going to have constrained delegation. So you're going to give me your Kerberos ticket, your ST, your service ticket. And then I'm going to go to the domain controller with a TGS of mine with your service ticket. And if I'm allowed to become you or impersonate you, it will pass the authentication. So then I give you that ticket back and everything's hunky-dory, right? Um, it's just a way to um, proxy authentication. In fact, the service that you probably see all the time that you don't know, the s 4 u to self thing, this stands for service for user 
to something. Uh, what is it? I think it's like service to user for proxy. Let's see. Uh, let's see, S4U2 self. What does it say? Um, yeah, service for user to proxy. So that's what all that type of stuff is. Um, I said self there, but it's proxy. So what we wanna do is attempt to authenticate. And we're not going to be able to right off the bat because we don't have um, resource, cons like uh, we don't have the permission to forward tickets. So in order to show that, let's get a ticket real quick. Um, and before I do that, let's show one other thing. Um, I'm gonna run bloody AD again. And I'm gonna show why I never use administrator for this, right? So we do the domain rebound HTB U. Uh, we just have to authenticate. So uh, great. I should just put this in my clipboard for now. Host DC01, get object administrator. Uh, let's see, one GR8T, I forgot the four. There we go. Um, the administrator account has not delegated. So no matter what, whenever we try to impersonate, we're not going to be able to, because this is a protected account. So it's protected from these at types of attacks. So let's go um, back to getting a service ticket. So get st.py, uh, rebound HTB, delegator. We need to put that in quotes. Uh, dash hashes, we gotta get this hash. Um, where was that? Was that in net exec? Were we doing it here? Yes, we were. So we can do hashes like that. Um, we need the DCIP, the SPN of this. I wanna say it was an HTTP, right? It's SPN here. Delegator. Let's see. I think this is a SPN. Uh, rebound HTB. If we try this, um, SPN is not allowed to delegate by user delegation or the initial TGT is not forwardable. Uh, if we pass it with the dash self, I thought that's what we did at the end of it. I wonder if this one does not have dash self. What version of this am I using? Let's copy this. New window, opt in packet, source VM bin activate. There we go. Um, the later version does have it. So we saved this ticket and there is a describe ticket. So if I run this, this shows me what this ticket is and we don't have the affordable here. So in order to do that, we're going to have to um, use rbcd.py, the resource-based constraint delegation script, in order to add a um, path. So let's do that real quick. I'm gonna do, um, actually before I do that, we need a SPN in order to access this. Um, so we need an account that has an SPN, I should say. And if we look, let's see, get object. If I get object or end, uh, username, bad password. There we go. Uh, or end doesn't have an SPN. It would be displayed around here. We could probably create an SPN for or end, but if we get the object, um, where is it? LDAP monitor. 
LDAP monitor does have a service principal name, so we can use this one. And the service principal name for delegator, I probably need to put that in quotes. No, I don't, is browser. So these are all important. Um, the other thing that may throw you off is if you ran, uh, was it get user SPNs? Let's do it on the latest version just to make sure. Um, rebound HDB or end one for you. Uh, let's see, we need a dash K. It's only gonna show the LDAP monitor one. It doesn't show the delegator one, because keep in mind, it says user. LDAP monitor is a user, delegator is a group managed service account. So that's why it doesn't show on get user SPN, but we could see it when we did the get object, right? So let's do um, rbcd.py. We wanna do rebound HTB delegator then dash hashes, uh, let's see, hashes, do we have it here? Should grab this, okay. And then after the hashes, we want to delegate from, and I'm gonna specify the um, LDAP monitor. And then after um, that, is there a dash H? Let's see. We need delegate to. So we can do delegate to delegator. Then we can say the action right. And you can see the actions here. We can read, write, remove, or flush. Um, and then after that, we just need to say uh, the IP, so DC IP, DC01, and then finally the use LDAP. Uh, let's see, delegate from use LDAP. Delegate. I'd have typos everywhere. Okay, so the LDAP monitor is now able to act on behalf. So if we do the, um, let's see, is find delegation here. We see there is another one. And this is able to act on behalf of people. But again, we can't act on behalf of administrator because it's a non-delegated account. So I'm gonna do get st.py, rebound HTB, LDAP underscore monitor, uh, the same password as orend, because it was a um, same credential type thing. The SPN, we're gonna do the SPN of the delegator service. And then we're going to impersonate um, DC01, the actual server. So we have a ticket now, and if we do describe ticket, uh, we probably have to put that in quotes. We can see what this is, and the flag is fordable. So that's why we're able to use it because it's a affordable flag. Um, so essentially what we did is um, send a ticket that says we're DC01 to the um, delegator service and able to get that validated so we become it. So this is essentially a silver ticket. Not to be confused, like when we did get ST, this is always going to be um, service ticket. The silver ticket is just the hash of the machine. Now, normally it doesn't have a lot of remote access capabilities. Like if I had the silver ticket to a workstation, it doesn't have remote access, so I can't just do PS exec on it. But essentially it's local system. Um, 
the domain is a little bit funky because you can use this to query um, the LSA. Like we can do a DC sync with this ticket. So let's do caribbean 5 cc name. Let's do this like that. And then we want to do, um, what is DC sync? Uh, secret stump, secret stump.py. And then let's specify um, dash H real quick. Let's see. I forget how to do this one over Kerberos. I think we just say dash K and then probably need dash DC IP, DC 01. Um, let's see, rebound HTB. Just DC user. That's not it. Is it just DC NTLM? Let's see, we have something wrong. Rebound HTB. What if I did DC01 rebound HTB? Let's put that at the end. Um, DC01. to specify no pass. I thought this would be fine. Let's see, export kb 5 cc name. So we have the ticket. There's definitely a flag I'm missing. Oh wait, um, I only did half of this. I need to create a second ticket and it's probably best we just um, restart this whole thing because I'm not sure if the cleanup script's going to screw us over. So uh, let's just clear this all out. Kirby 5 cc name, there we go. So let's do the RBCD again. So here we're giving ourselves the ability, or before if we do find delegation, which I did in this window. I just wanna make sure the cleanup task has hit and we no longer have delegation. Okay. So the other thing, get object. If we do DC01, this is where we get the HTTP service principle name probably. Uh, or maybe not, uh, HTTP, there it is. So that's where we got the HTTP SPN. I think I did not explain that earlier, but let's go back. I'm gonna create this. So now we have the uh, delegation and Unset kb 5 cc name. Is that why that aired? Okay. So accounts allow, allowed to act on behalf of other identities, LDAP monitor. So let's get the service ticket again. So we'll do get st, uh, LDAP monitor, SPN is browser. Okay. And now we're going to have to um, do the second ticket in order to um, impersonate. So we'll do get service ticket dot pi SPN HTTP DCO one rebound HTB. 
Then we want to impersonate, impersonate DC01. Uh, the authentic, like what we're authenticating as is delegator. Then we need dash hashes like this. Then we give it the additional ticket. And that's going to be the ticket that just generated. Let's see, that should be in op bloody AD. Saving ticket. Where did this save to? Oh, opt-in packet. There we go. So we get that ticket. And we have an open quote somewhere. Open close, open close, open close. There we go. So this ticket is the one that should allow us to impersonate the DC. And this was a lot. Um, so I'm gonna to try to recap it. I'm probably gonna say some things wrong, so don't take this as like gospel, but essentially the delegator had the ability of constrained delegation that allowed him to impersonate others. I think in Active Directory, that's like MS allowed to act on behalf of other identities. However, when we created those tickets, it wasn't affordable, so we couldn't really use them in order to do anything fun. However, since we had delegator's password with rbcd.py, that's resource-based constrained delegation, we can change how it's configured and allow LDAP monitor to be a trusted delegator to this account. And LDAP monitor has affordable tickets. So we can use that and tack on the delegator's permission to create a affordable ticket that can impersonate the DC. And we chose the DC instead of administrator because administrator was a protected account, so it couldn't be delegated. So the DC was the next highest privileged account that we could do, and that will let us hopefully DC sync. So let's get to that. And set care B5 CC name is equal to that. Secret stump, invalid principle syntax. Uh, what was definitely closer? Don't know what invalid principle syntax means. Let's try a K list and no credentials. Export. There we go. I forgot the export command. That's still, let's see, KRB5. Get rid of that. Do it this way. Oh, I deleted the DC01. I bet that's it. You need the fully qualified name there. I think I deleted that trying to fix other things. There we go. Wow. Who would have thought that's the part I'd stumble most on? But we finally got secret stump. We have the administrator hash. So we can now PS exec or like WinRM. Uh, if we do evil WinRM, DC01, let's do administrator and then dash capital H and paste in his hash. And there we go. We are now administrator. So 
that is going to be Rebound. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care, and I'll see you all next time.